In this video, I compare two of the biggest and most off-road worthy SUVs from Toyota. A 2020 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro versus a 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser. Both the Sequoia and Land Cruiser are very capable truck-based SUVs that can swallow up passengers and cargo with breeze. They also have all the right equipment to tackle the outdoors and both are known to last forever. However, what makes them different from each other and which one is right for you? Let's find out. Number one, exterior. Even though both of these SUVs are large, full-size, body-on-frame SUVs, the Sequoia is much larger in dimensions versus the Land Cruiser. The Sequoia is over 10 inches longer in length and wheelbase, 2 inches wider, and 3 inches taller. The curb weight for both of these behemoths come close to 6,000 pounds, with the Sequoia being slightly heavier. There is considerable difference in space though, and I'll show you that later on in this video. The Sequoia TRD Pro on the outside has curvy and brawny cues that's somewhat combined. Up front, there is a large black grille with Toyota stamped right in the middle. You have some modern looking LED headlights and some rigid industry LED fog lights. Underneath, you have a large TRD skid plate. The front of the Land Cruiser is more athletic than the Sequoia and is covered with a lot more chrome. The large grille is surrounded in chrome that carries into the more traditional looking LED headlights and fog lights. The curvy and brawny cues can also be seen on the side of the Sequoia as well. With this TRD Pro, you have special black 18 inch BBS lightweight wheels. You also have a huge roof rack on top and special black TRD running boards to help getting in and out easier. They are tucked right against the body, so there's no worries that they will rub on the trails. The Land Cruiser side profile has a lower belt line, and you can see that the windows are much bigger and taller. The wheels are 18 inch, and there are running boards that are fully integrated into the body. Now the back of the Sequoia TRD Pro looks round with large round smoke taillights, and all the badging is in black. In fact, there's no chrome badging or trim pieces anywhere on this TRD Pro. On the back of the Land Cruiser, it's a lot more squared and chiseled. You have large squared taillights, and you have a large Land Cruiser chrome trim piece that's right in the middle. Here is a side-by-side -side shot of the front, side, and rear of the Sequoia TRD Pro and the Land Cruiser. Which one do you prefer? Number two, engine off-road capabilities. Starting with the basics, both the Sequoia TRD Pro and Land Cruiser uses the same engine, a 5.7 liter V8 pushing 381 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque. Now the Sequoia TRD Pro uses a six-speed automatic, while the Land Cruiser uses an eight-speed automatic. Fuel economy is identical in both SUVs. When I test drove the Sequoia TRD Pro and the Land Cruiser, I thought the V8 engine had plenty of grunt and moved both SUVs rather quickly. There was never any doubt that I can't accelerate or pass anyone that I met on the road. The Sequoia TRD Pro can tow up to 7,100 pounds and that's slightly less than a non-TRD Pro variant due to the suspension setup. Now the Land Cruiser on the other hand could tow up to 8,100 pounds, which is a full thousand pounds more. As for going off-road, the TRD Pro comes with specially tuned springs and Fox internal bypass shocks. You have a four-wheel drive system with low and high. You get a torsion and center locking differential to balance the power between the front and rear wheels. Also, Toyota made sure to equip this TRD Pro with Michelin tires for more grip. The Sequoia has 10 inches of ground clearance and has 27 degree approach angle and 21 degree departure angle. Now, the Land Cruiser is known for being one of the most off-road worthy SUVs on the planet and the equipment definitely shows why. The Land Cruiser also comes with a four-wheel drive system with low and high. You get a torsion center locking differential and you get crawl control, which is kind of like cruise control for terrain, multi-terrain select, which is used to adjust the traction control for any terrain surfaces, 
and multi-terrain view monitor which showcases what's around your Land Cruiser. On top of that, the Land Cruiser also comes with KDSS, which uses hydraulic cylinders to control the sway bars. It's great for on-road behavior and great for wheel articulation when going off-roading. Now, the Land Cruiser has 9 inches of ground clearance, which is 1 inch less than Sequoia. However, it has 32 degree approach angle and 24 degree departure angle, which both are significantly better. So in this category, definitely no contest. The Land Cruiser not only can tow more, but is much more off-road capable than the Sequoia TRD Pro. Number three, interior space and quality. Starting with the space, since the Sequoia TRD Pro is much bigger on the outside, it is also much bigger on the inside too, significantly bigger. With me in the second row and I'm five feet 10, I have 10 to 12 inches of leg room and the seats do slide forward and backwards since the second row is equipped with captain chairs. With the second row seat all the way back, I still have one to two inches of leg room in the third row and with plenty of headroom. In the Land Cruiser in the second row, I have maybe only four to five inches of leg room, which isn't bad, but the seats aren't adjustable, which means I have negative inches of leg room in the third row. As you see here, I do not fit in the third row at all. It is very small and it's very hard to get out of. As for cargo space, there's also a huge difference between the two SUVs and especially since the third row seats take up a ton of space when folded in the Land Cruiser. And by the way, the Sequoia TRD Pro does provide power folding third row seats which can also recline. In the Land Cruiser, the third row is all manual. As for looks and quality, that's where the Land Cruiser wins out. The Sequoia TRD Pro's interior is all black with leather and red stitching. Now the leather quality is okay and the design quite honestly looks kind of plain. The same goes with the door panels and the front dash. The dash is pulled straight from a Tundra and is very truck like with a lot of large knobs and a lot of hard plastic pieces everywhere. The buttons, heated seat knobs, shifter areas all look like they were designed a few decades ago. Now the Land Cruiser interior is definitely much more upscale, starting with a soft tan leather that carries into the nice looking door panels. Up front, the steering wheel dash design is elegant and modern, and the use of hard plastic is minimal. Most places you touch is covered up by soft leather. The knobs are also covered up with aluminum, and they look and feel good. So in terms of space and practicality, the Sequoia TRD Pro definitely wins out due to its bigger size. However, the Land Cruiser's cabin is a lot more elegant and higher quality. Which one do you prefer? Number four, features. Despite its age, Toyota has been adding on features little by little to the Sequoia each and every year. The 7 inch infotainment screen that you see here was updated in 2020 and now has all the latest goodies. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto are supported including Wi-Fi capabilities. The interface is also much more modern and useful than previous models. It's pretty responsive when scrolling too. You also have a push button start, heated seats three USB ports up front, and a four inch screen in a gauge cluster that gives you a lot of useful information. Also on the TRD Pro, you get Toyota Safety Sense P, which includes pre-collision system, lane departure alert, auto high beam, dynamic radar cruise control, and you do get blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. Now the Land Cruiser has many of these things, but it does have one big drawback. Like the Sequoia, you do have a large 4-inch screen in the gauge cluster full of useful info. You also get heated and ventilated seats for the driver and passenger, but only one USB port. You do also get wireless charging for your phone, which is really nice. Let's not forget about that huge cool box that's in the center armrest for the Land Cruiser as well. However, this large 9-inch infotainment screen leaves a lot to be desired. It is using Toyota's old interface, which is clumsy and it looks like it was designed 20 years ago. There's no Apple CarPlay, nor Android Auto, nor Wi-Fi. The interface is just slow and laggy. The Land Cruiser also gets the same Toyota Safety Sense P features along with blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. So for this category, which one do you prefer? The more modern infotainment screen and the more USB ports that you get in a Sequoia TRD Pro, or do you prefer to have features like wireless charging and ventilated seats in a Land Cruiser? 
Number five, the drive and pricing. In a Sequoia, you sit extremely high up, and you definitely feel the height and width of the SUV once you get behind the wheel. The running boards is definitely needed for most people under six feet tall. Now, the acceleration is very strong, and the six-speed automatic does a very good job at being in the right gear all the time. The transmission never feels like it's hunting for the right gear, such as some of the other cars on the nine or ten-speed automatic. The steering is light, very light. One downside to the light steering is when combined with steering play, it's a challenge sometimes to keep the Sequoia straight, especially over bumpy surfaces. Now, the TRD tuned suspension, which is meant to give the Sequoia a better time on the trails, makes a big difference on the road because it gives the Sequoia TRD Pro a very soft and comfortable ride. It's like you're riding on a cloud. The suspension soaks up literally everything. The TRD tuned exhaust also gives a subtle yet noticeable V8 growl upon acceleration, and I really like that. And the brakes also feel good on this big SUV. Overall, I was very impressed with my drive. Now, in the Land Cruiser, you still sit very high up, but it definitely doesn't feel as high or as wide as the Sequoia. It feels more like a large three-row crossover. This is a good thing for most people. The ride is very quiet at all speeds, and the suspension is also very comfortable. It's not as soft as the TRD Pro, but it still does a good job at soaking up the bumps on the road. Acceleration came on strong, and the eight-speed automatic did a good job going through the gears. To be honest, though, I prefer the six-speed in Sequoia over the eight-speed in the Land Cruiser. It just felt like it was in the right gear at all speeds. The Land Cruiser steering is very heavy. And much heavier than the one in the Sequoia TRD Pro, and a lot more precise. You really can't go wrong with the drive in either SUV. It really depends on your personal preference. As for the price, the Land Cruiser starts a tad under eighty-six thousand dollars. The Heritage Edition, two thousand more than that at eighty-eight thousand dollars. Now the Sequoia TRD Pro is a tad above sixty-four thousand dollars. So if you compare a base Land Cruiser with a base Sequoia TRD Pro, There's a $22,000 difference between the two SUVs, which is pretty staggering. So, in the end, which SUV do you prefer? Do you like the bigger and less expensive Sequoia TRD Pro, or do you prefer the more capable and upscale Land Cruiser? Leave your thoughts below. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel, and make sure you check out the full review videos on both of these SUVs if you haven't yet.